So welcome everybody to Off the Record Airtable Secrets and Lore. We're a group of Airtable users exploring new ways to use Airtable to optimize our businesses and lives. Open to hearing from anyone about your experience, good or bad, using Airtable to make a positive impact in the world. Uh, we attempt to promote people, did I say this? We attempt to promote people coming from any level to share their ideas or ask questions, also share our experiences, tips, and practices, and offer ways to get help and get involved in the community. Uh, we meet every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you want to join, you can go to www.videowithben.com and it'll redirect you to Zoom. So to kick things off, I think this week, I know I have a cool thing to share with substitute formula, um, but we'll also go into news later today, which I don't think there's much of any, but we can go in. I have seen people saying your table slow. That's about it. And I've noticed it being slow, but that's really the extent of the news. Um, I will show this substitute formula. So I took this concept from W. Van Hall. Me and Kuvan were just talking about this. But basically, I had built this base just to make the substitute formula like have the output be the formula that you would put in a formula field. So you can have however many like fields or like uh, merge fields that you would want. So in your text, it would like you would have like percents or you would have like the curly braces. Um, and what it ends up doing is it takes all of these are like the end of a substitute formula and it ends up rolling it up into uh, a substitute and it also does array joins. I don't know if you saw the checkbox, if it's a lookup and needs to have array join. And then it also has the trim thing in there for all of them. But this is my pride and joy of this week is this. Come on, you're on mute. So the idea is, is that you have a commonly used formula that you might use and you just need to replace the names of the different fields. And yeah. so this generates that formula for you. Yeah, I couldn't think of any other way to do it. So it just basically like there's a few hidden fields here. They're not, I don't follow any good naming structure, but this just brings in the first part of it and then you, pick whether you're referencing the subject or the body. This is the use cases for emails mm -hmm. and it pulls in the values, comma separated, and then there's just a formula that pulls all of them together, basically. So if you wanted to add like a new one, like say, if new field, this was just an example, we would have to link everything to the same record and then it pulls that one in there as well. So now in our formula, new field, this is the formula you would copy and paste into the uh -huh. formula field. And it, you can see now it has new field in here. It replaces, it substitutes percent new field with the field named new field. Mm -hmm. There is the limitation, like I think you talked about last week as if any of these field names change in the, actual base, then it would mess it up if you were to copy and paste in there. Uh, but yeah, what are your thoughts on, have you seen, I, I tried to find this because I was like, for sure, Debbie Van Hall has built this exact thing, but I couldn't find it. This is like his. Um, so usually when I, do that kind of thing. I just use it in a plain old text editor. Um, I guess I don't have to do it that often. Yeah. But one way, like the first thing I want to see is like when I saw the formulas, like, oh my gosh, that's a huge, all one line kind of messed up. It's a really hard to read formula. I was wondering if there's some way of introducing some new line characters in there that would make it easier to read. Yeah, so that was kind of the pain point for the client is I want them to be able to easily add new fields in here as they customize their table of email templates. 
And so by just enabling them to add a new record and say like, um, well, you, you could even do it like this, new field two, and then They just add it in here and they don't have to care about what the formula looks like. It just has a functioning formula because kind of their, their pain point was they don't want to have to edit this and they have no idea what any of this means, mm -hmm. but they can easily add a new field like this. Okay. Um, Are you interested in seeing if we could add some new line breaks and stuff like that to make it a little bit easier to read? Yeah, I have no idea how to do that, but I'm more than, I've never, all the formulas that I've ever written, they've always been as I just keep typing like this. I always write them in the formula box. Uh huh. First time I've done something like this, where it is something you copy. Okay. Oh, multi-line formulas are the way to go. They're, they're so much easier to read when you have multiple lines on them. Yeah. Um, do you have a plain text editor where you can share the screen of the plain text editor as well? Is the, the, isn't there like a summary app or something? Does that count as a plain text editor? Um, yeah, so there's the description app that you can use that. The other thing that you can actually technically use is scripting app. I like scripting app a little bit better um, because it will give you bracket matching. Um, but also, I also just use the plain text editor. Oh, wait, actually, that brings yeah. us to our news. I can just use that base and use scripting app. I was yeah. about to say, Ben, you don't have to move it to a different workspace. Just use scripting app because it's free. It's scripting here. It's free and uh, you can actually close it down. Like when you first open up scripting out, it's big and it's full screen, but you can actually close it down and still edit stuff and see your base at the same time. Camille, what do you think of my formula creator? Do you see a better way to do this? Uh... Ironically, you could do, you can edit the formula that you have using substitutes to introduce new lines. Uh, yeah. The executed output is. I was thinking if we could just walk through the concept of writing, since you're, you're not used to writing multi-line formulas, if we could just walk through that. I figured I'd start with the last one, which is the formula to copy. So where, where I've ran into trouble with this, and this is mainly just because I don't know how to do this, and this, this is helpful, is I would try to customize this and I would like try to do line breaks in here and it wouldn't work. You can't, you can't do it there. You gotta do it somewhere else. So copy all of that. Uh, this one, or do you want me to do that? No, not that one right there. Well, let, let's start with this one so we can see, show you how it works. Okay, copy that. And then in scripting app, just paste that whole thing. Okay. And now you're gonna get all kinds of like, you know, yucky stuff in it because it's it not. doesn't, you know, recognize some things, but did you actually get all of it? Because it's saying calculation to roll up. Where is that? It just out of screen, I think. Oh, okay. All right, there it is. Okay, so you see the curly braces. <clears throat> okay, so, and then it's and. So let's go ahead and put each new thing that you're concatenating together on its own line. So just before the just before the and, just put a new line break. All right. Okay. All right. Now, one thing that I like doing when they're really long concatenations is I actually like using the concatenate formula uh, function instead. So let's turn that into concatenate. So on top of line one, just type concatenate all capital letters, open curly brace. Okay, and then at the end, put a close and then get rid of all the ampersands and put the commas at the end of the previous line. Mm 
Okay. And then go ahead and indent lines three through six. If I highlight all of them and press tab, will it indent all of them? Yep, that's why I like a code editor. There you go. <laughs> okay, so this now is a lot easier to read. You can see the whole thing is a big concatenation. First, you're going to concatenate that roll-up field, and then you're going to concatenate the word array join with an open parentheses, and then the value of what field, and then a close parentheses, and then the values copy field. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy that. The whole thing, just do a big old copy and then paste it into your formula to copy. That looks a lot better. Yeah. And what I like about this is, you know how it's really hard to figure out, you know, when do you put in a comma or you have a stray comma or a missing comma? The nice thing about this is each parameter is its own line. And you just look, do I have a comma at the end of every single line? except the one just before the closing parentheses, which is on its line by itself. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, but now this is, so all this is doing is putting a big array join. Yes, yeah, so it is. Fields uh, and then values copy. So let's see, what, what do each of those fields look like? And then we can figure out where we need to put in our new line characters. Yeah, so it'd probably help if I rename these or something. So these ones are the, this is like the beginning of the formula. Okay. This one is the end of form. And this is the, the middle. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so that one's not a big deal. Like a sandwich. Okay. So, in the actual substitute, what is the, what do you consider to be the beginning, the middle, and the end? So, let's go ahead and just copy that formula there. This one? Mm, okay. So, the beginning of the formula, it's just a whole bunch of substitutes. Yep. Okay. Should I enter like, forward slash n here? Um, yeah, well, actually, the fact that there's a whole bunch of substitutes is not that big of a deal. OK, okay. so I should copy this. So I'd like, let's go look at the final, the final okay. formula that's produced, the formula to copy. And let's see where I would put in new line characters so that then we can decide where we want to do in the formula. Okay. I think I would have put it into the formula we were just looking at before. Since, it, since that was the one that was array joining things to start with, if you array join it with a new line, then the end result probably should have everything on it. I don't know. That's me guessing. Yeah. Go ahead and take the, the actual formula that was created. This one has array but, join, but it's no, in. No, no, not that one because that's fake. The, the actual rule of this you have, beginning of formula. But let, let's. That has array join. You're doing with, you know, just no characters in between. I would have first attempted to do the new line. There. Yeah, you probably want to put new lines in that. But the beginning of the formula, it's all substitutes, and it's not particularly important that they're on each new line because they're all going to be the same. It's this end of formula, which I might want to put in new line characters. Am I doing that right? So but just the new line character, no comma. But they still need to be no no comma, just okay. no comma. Wait wait, do they still need do they need to have a comma in there? Yeah. Because, oh yeah okay yeah so comma and then the new line character. Yeah so the reason the comma we're referencing. Oh because you didn't have a value in your array join before so yeah. So comma new line character. And one question I also have is when do you use double quotes versus single quotes? Whenever I want to. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, so okay. the idea is if you, you can use double quotes or single quotes and you can use the opposite. So for example, if I want to use a single quote in my actual literal string, I'll probably use double quotes on the outside and then I can type a regular single quote without escaping it. And then vice versa. If I want to use double quotes inside my literal string, then I'll use single quotes on the outside so that I don't have to escape my double quotes. 
but people get confused by those a lot. Okay. You are more likely going to use an apostrophe than you are to double quotes within the actual body of whatever it is you're typing. But changing the quote style, as long as they're straight quotes, doesn't really matter. So right. like some people say, oh no, your formal is broken because it has single quotes instead of double quotes, and that's actually not the issue. Okay, so this worked now. So we can see all of the new. Sorry. Yeah. Right, and then let's go back to your formula to copy and let's add some new lines in there. So let's go back to the formula to copy that formula. Copy that back into um, scripting app so that we can have the editor so we can edit it as a multi line formula. This one right here or the? No, the one right there. So copy that. And... Yeah, just go back to scripting. Actually, it's already there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay, so here, go ahead and so on line two, you say the calculation two from roll up. Actually, you changed the name of that field, didn't you? Yeah, so we have to paste it in. <laughs> okay, then at, what I do is at the end of these, before the comma, I just put an ampersand new line. Does it have to be in quotes? Yes. That's nice that it adds the quotes there. Anyway. Yeah, well, for a ready join, you can just put it in the middle of the quote. You don't have to do the ampersand. Should I? I look. For, I like putting spaces between my ampersands and everything else, just to make it easier to read. So, for anybody watching, you can use ampersands inside of a concatenate form now. And then do the same thing with. Values. All the other lines, so for lines four and five. You actually can put that on the inside. You don't need to have the ampersand. Yeah. Okay, and then copy that. So this is why I like using a combination of concatenate function and the ampersand operator. Okay. So now we have a whole bunch of substitutes and then we have an array join. And then we have a whole bunch of other stuffs that are within the substitutes. Yep. Um, I think this makes sense. Yeah. So if I'm in here in the, the editor and I want to have a, a call field, does it finish the field for you? No, this is just a plain text editor here. Okay. That's the biggest thing that I like about the in the formula box. Mm -hmm. Is that it'll you can there's, just click on a field? There's a way yeah. to force it in, you know, inconveniently if you first load in whatever table the field is in. Yeah. Um, and then if you do like table.fields or something, you could, you could find all of the fields within that table and it will begin to automatically for you, but then you have to copy from wherever you did that somewhere in the code editor and paste it into the formula to actually build it. It's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, my, you can force it, but it's not convenient. Normally in my workflow, what I do is if I know that I'm going to be several fields that I'm going to have it, what I'll do is in the actual editor, I'll just go in and type in each of the fields that I know that I'm going to want to use. And then I'll copy that into my plain text editor. And then I'll just copy and paste it from there, however I need them. Yeah, that makes sense. One thing I really like about this is it's easy to say like there's a comma at the end of each line because mm -hmm. with Airtable different than Excel, there's no like, like I remember in Excel, you could just click a button and it would run through each step of the formula. 
um, to see whether it returned like true or false or like a value and then it do all the multiplication and everything. But in Airtable, it just gives you like a one sentence that's in yeah. there if there's an error. And it's it just like, says, I don't, it just says that there's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but there's the two things that I really like about using a code editor. And that is that you can just press tab easily to indent things evenly. And also that it has a bracket matching. So you can make sure you can see which bracket, which parenthesis matches with which other parenthesis. Um, I usually don't actually like scripting block for doing this because you can see it gives you all those wavy red underlines and all of that, which to me is too distracting. Um, so I'll use either a regular, a regular code editor that doesn't have quite as much checking, so it doesn't give me all of that, or just a plain text editor that's completely plain text. Will a plain text editor give you like the parentheses matching? No, a plain text editor will not give you the bracket matching. Um, but what I like about it is, is like I use Notepad on Windows, is it launches really fast. Yeah. My code editor, you know, it takes a few seconds to actually come alive. Yeah. So I was trying to find other ways to do mass substitutions like this. Is there any other like way than nesting a bunch of substitute formulas around each other? Is it? Would like regex be? No. Be, well, you, regex replace. The problem with regex is that you you need to have. I mean, it, it's the same thing. You, you still have to have a bunch of nested regexes. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking at this on your array join. Let's take out those new line characters on the array join. Because now that I look at it, it's just array join that one field. So you don't really need that. Yeah. I think it'd be clear if we didn't have the new lines in that. And now hindsight, I can't remember why we had, or why I put that in. So there. on line three and line four, just take out the new lines there. Yeah, then I think the whole thing will be clear. There you go. So a bunch of substitutes, an array join, and then the value of the placeholder, and then trim, and then the field followed by two closing parentheses, one for the trim and one for the substitute. Unless it's a lookup, which in that case, from my understanding, I had to put an array join in there. Um, you don't have to put an array join, but you do have to turn it into a string somehow. So I could use what besides array join? I like, usually use ampersand empty ampersand. string. Okay. The main reason why I do that is because it's fewer characters to type. <laughs> and also is because it puts it at the end. So it's less distracting of what I'm actually doing as far as what's going on is you get right to the meat of what you want, which is the field name first when reading it. So I think it's easier to read. So is this like an overuse of, or a misuse of the array join formula? Or is this like a legitimate use just to oh, make something like this a string? Yeah, you, you can do it. Um, array join, I really don't like using array join in regular formula fields because sometimes weird things happen. Whereas if you use, um, ampersand empty string, it will work for absolutely everything. If like I, even if it wasn't an array to begin with. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. If I were to use a roll up field and have it be array join, would it return as a string or as an array? Roll up fields always return flat data types. Roll up fields never return well, let me rephrase. I suppose they would return an array if you didn't use something like array join or that, but I've never had a roll up field that didn't use something that flattens it into a single data type. Okay. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense because that's why we don't need array join here, even though these are referencing roll ups. Mm -hmm.
So can, can, on the beginning of the formula, can you tell me what that's rolling up? The beginning? Yeah. So uh, this is rolling up. I think it actually is probably a hidden field here. This. It's a bunch of substitutes? Okay. So you don't actually need that as a separate roll-up field. You could do this all in one roll-up field. You Look, scrapped. I have no idea how to. I couldn't, that was like, this was like the easiest way for me to get this far and then I was okay. happy. Well, basically all it is, is substitute however many times there are. So let's go ahead. Do you want to play with this? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's going to be a formula. Let's take your, um, let's create a new roll-up field. I'm trying to think new one shot or something. <laughs> Do it all. So table one. Uh-huh. And then what does your end of formula pull from? I think it's calculation because calculation two was. OK. Sorry. All right, so there's calculation two. So let, now let's. Yeah. OK. This is the end. All right. Let's start. The beginning of the formula is just that substitute open parentheses repeated several times right yeah so let's do rept r-e-p-t open parentheses and then the formula you want that you're going to repeat is just you know the substitute open parentheses okay close quote and then the number of times you want it to repeat is the number of things that you have in the roll-up field right the number of rows right yeah. so that would be count all that count a mm, or non-empty values well they're all going to have values right so you could use count all or count a values and then close parentheses and then let's do close parentheses and see what this gives you okay so do you see how that's the beginning of your formula yep Same. okay sweet all right now, let's go ahead and click cancel, and we're going to do a bunch of copy paste here. Okay? okay, so let's start. Does can you open up scripting app so that it's just there on the side and not opening and closing and opening and closing? Yeah, edit the code and then click the X there. And then just leave there. Great. Now we can see both things. Okay. So our concatenate is still at the beginning, right? That's good. So now let's open up the new one shot. And that rep substitute, copy that. And then go over to scripting app. And where it says beginning of formula, put that in. Okay, so we're going to have that. That's the beginning of the formula, and then we're going to have the array join, which filled, and now the end of the formula. Let's go find your end of the formula roll up. But you don't need to duplicate it, we just need that formula there. And then put that in where it says end of formula. Copy that whole thing. Will and this then, reference fields in this table? Yeah, that's fine. And then go back to your roll-up field, the, the, the one-shot one. And then just paste? Yep. Oh, uh. uh, yeah, I hate this. You click away. Yeah, there's, and then click save. So, no worries. Okay. Right. So now it's got your whole thing. Awesome. So just in one field. So all in one roll. So you don't need the beginning, you don't need the end, and you don't need the final formula field. That's awesome. Now I can delete all these. Maybe. Um, since we're here, there's one bug that reminds me of this one where you can't. So I want to relabel this formula to copy. Yeah. 
and then you don't need the end of formula. And then do you want to see one more thing that I do? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. So if you look in scripting app, go ahead and make this big now. You'll see that a lot of this is, it's kind of like, it's confusing. You're like, we don't know what these things are. Okay. So it'd be nice if we could document it, but formulas don't include documentation. You can't do that in a formula. But what you can do is you can include a fake formula. So let's go ahead and put a new line between lines one and two. And after three, just if I, if I were typing, it would be zero. Okay, so in line two, go ahead and type if. So tab if, open parentheses, okay. And then we're gonna put that closing parentheses on line four. And then a comma after the closing parentheses on line four. Okay, the if I like to be in a capital because Airtable likes capital letters for function names. Okay, all right, and then at the end of line three, take away the comma. And let's go ahead and indent line three. Oh, okay. Okay, now after your if and the open parentheses, we're gonna put it in a string, so just double quotes, and then a comma. Now, inside those double quotes, we're gonna say what the heck this thing is, and you can just type in beginning of formula, or, you know, beginning of formula substitutes for everything. So what you have now is a comment that says what the heck that section of the formula does. This if statement is always going to evaluate to true because that string is got a value in it. So it's always going to be true. So it's always going to have the value, which is in this case, the rept formula. So you've just documented that. I only do this for really super complicated formulas because it does add extra execution time. But in this case, you're not actually running this roll up that often. You're not changing it that much. Yeah. And the understanding what things do is more important. Mm -hmm. So I could add that if on yeah. like all of these, if I wanted so to. Probably, I would add that then again, you know, for a line eight. Okay. And now that I actually look at lines five through seven, I think those actually should all be in the same line. So I would put, I would combine those together with an ampersand. Why would you do the ampersand? Well, for one thing is in the end, they're all going to be all in one line and it makes it a little bit more clear that this is going to be array joined with the name of that one field. And I would put spaces around the ampersands to make that more clear. I feel like I don't put spaces because I feel like in Excel, you could not put spaces. Where you... <laughs> yeah, I mean, so everyone has their own little quirks from whatever their coding background is. I think it's easier to read when you have spaces. So that's why I put spaces. Yeah. A lot of what I do is how can I get this not just to work right when I'm building a formula, but so that I can read this formula afterwards so that I can maintain it so I can understand what's going on when I look at it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, go I ahead remember, and paste that in. Um, I remember you talking about having these ifs in here, but I haven't done them yet. Click away and then it'll ask you if you want to save. <laughs> there. So now 
you can also get rid of that formula field or that field that you had in table one that just said substitute because you don't need that anymore, that calculation too. Okay. And then for calculation, let's see if we can, do you wanna try and format this one? Let's do it. So we'll do the... Okay, did you get, so yeah, delete everything that was in scripting out before. It's way too confusing if you have multiple things. <laughs> everything Mm -hmm. All right, so should we start off with concatenate again? Okay, so let's start off at line one. Do you see how you have to escape your, your quote? So this is an ideal case where I would use single quotes on the outside and double quotes on the in, and double quote on the inside so that I don't have to do all that escaping. So then I just do that? Yeah. Okay, that's new to me. I didn't know you okay. could do so it looks like you want to have the first part is the merge text. So I would probably use that. Um, hold on, families. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, you're way ahead of me. So I, for like lines one, no, no see, lines two, three, and four, I feel like those all belong together. And then commas at the end? Yeah. So is this another example? Yeah, that's another case where if you invert your, your alternate your quote styles, so for anybody watching, what I was doing there was I wanted to have a quote inside here. Like I wanted to have a quote in the result of the formula, not to signify that there was text there, which there is a string there. And maybe I'm not explaining this the right way, but if you have a, if you do a back forward slash or backslash this one in a quote, it returns the quote sign within there. So that's why I had those in both places. But I can do commas here now. I guess these should probably be on the same one. That would make sense. Maybe. Yeah. But to make Kuban happy at our space. <laughs> Holy killing. Thank you. Let's see that actually that that closing one on line six that actually goes with your trim so I would put that on a new line. And then I would probably indent lines four through six because those all go inside the trim. I mean they're all being concatenated I don't know I, i'm kind of it's kind of hard to that that's that's really, really very much a stylistic thing. So, yeah, so this was trim in parentheses and everything inside it, we needed the name of the field. Yeah, and then array join also in quotes. It's weird trying to write formulas and I can't imagine how complex the, that is. Actually, app. you know what, let's do this. Get, <laughs> instead of doing array join, let's go put it with the ampersand. So take out line four. Just take it out. Take out all of line four.
Is that what you meant? Okay. Well, you still have a line floor. It's just empty. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now on line five, instead of a closing parenthesis, say ampersand and then your quotes, but you might want to alternate your quote style. And you need to have two quotes in there. Okay, so this is simpler. Now we're gonna trim the field name inside those, wait a minute, where does the, um, where does the trim go? What's the? So this was trim on the field name, which would, I just wanted, this is like an actual trim formula that trims any spaces off the referenced field. Okay. Name. All right, so actually what I would do is see on line four, yeah. you see how the closing parenthesis is actually the closing parenthesis for the trim? I would put that on a new line. Is that, are you referencing this one? Yeah, so you have a closing curly brace. Whoa, 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 no, 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 keep that the way it was. Okay, then go in between the closing curly brace and the closing parenthesis. Okay. And here, so okay. this little, yeah, and then comma new line. And then back that up so that this closing bracket parenthesis is at the same level as the trim because that's closing the trim. Okay, yeah. so it's trim. Why are you trying to trim the merge field name? Just because in case they hadn't done it? Yeah. In oh, case okay. Case in there. All right. And then we have our if lookup. That we could back up a level. Okay. And that closing parentheses at the very end on line seven, that's actually the closing parentheses for your substitute. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because this is like the second half of it. Yeah, so do you want to document that that's the closing parenthesis for your substitute? Yeah, we could do that. That'd yeah, so just yeah. do the if statement. Well, I have to go put something in the oven. <laughs> okay, I will. I'll take care of the if statement. Is this just exhilarating for you? Yeah. I lost the plot like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> We're just applying a bit of white space to formulas. And I would go ahead, I'd put that on, don't do it all in one line for line seven because otherwise it's too hard to, to read. So split it up. Like I've actually gone back and forth and sometimes, and I've just decided that, you know, so like line seven and eight, you can put together, or I would actually would put line seven and eight together. But otherwise your comment runs too close into what you're actually including. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay, so now we can read this. The whole thing is a big concatenation. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our merge text inside quotes. And then we're going to have trim and the field name inside curly braces. And if it's a lookup field, we're going to turn that, force it into a string by concatenating an empty string at the end. And then finally, we're going to have the closing parenthesis for the substitute. Does yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Just clicked why we have this here instead of the array join. Yeah. So it, it's this way cleaner because instead of having two if statements, one for the beginning and the end, you only need one. And then when you read the final formula, I think it's a little bit cleaner to read as well. Yeah. So you can copy that in to the in calculation. That. 
and the result of the calculation is exactly the same. But if you ever have to go and edit that formula itself or do anything with that formula, now it's easier to see what's going on. So if I need to edit this, would you say just like copy this and put it somewhere else and edit it there? Yeah, well, it depends on what the level of editing is. If I go and I said, oh, actually, you know, it's a really small typo, like I just need to add, you know, a comma and then a space instead of just a comma, I might do it right here. If it's anything more than that, if it's anything that involves multiple lines, I'd always put it into a different text editor. So if I wanted to edit this and like enter a new line in here somewhere, could I? Yeah, so like, where do you wanna put your new line? Um, we'll say we'll like split up, we'll put this closing bracket onto a new line. Um, if you're gonna put something on a new line, I think the candidate would be at the comma. Yes, like if I put a comma here and then I wanted to put this on the next line. Yeah, and then so put a new line there. Did I do that right? Actually, wait, wait. Mm, hold on. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Let's go back into the text editor and do it. If you're talking... It's doing. Yeah, I just want to like form. Can you format it at all in here? Like, I just want to. No, you can't add new lines in the text editor. So that's the tutorial on writing multi line formulas, which Aaron was too scared to go through. <laughs> I remember seeing your comments about that. And I was like, that would be useful because I've tried so many different ways trying to hit like enter not like that no like shift enter yeah you no know, it you can't do it um i don't know if anybody else has this bug and I, this it might not be an issue in this space it's definitely not going to be but when moving fields around mm -hmm. so say you have like 200 fields it reminds me of like this thing when you're in this formula here, like uh -huh. the save button, when you're trying to, because this is nice. If you can see all the fields, you can just drag them around like this. Uh huh. But if you end up having so many fields that you have the scrolly bar, uh huh. Here, and you try to drag one from, like you add a new field at the end, try to drag it to the top in like a new view, then it gets you up to as far as you can scroll, and then it like drops it off. And then you have to drag it like five times. Do you want to know my hack for that? Um, well, the hack that I found was you hide all and then just unhide like one field at the beginning, one field at the, or that field at the end, and just drag it to the left, then it puts it. Yeah. That was the only thing. Is that like but, a- Well, the, the one thing about that is sometimes if you have particular things um, and you don't want to, you can't just do a hide all because you have very specific ones is you'd make a duplicate of the view and then so that's going to keep track of which ones are hidden and which ones are closed then you do your hide all and then you copy the field visibility from that saved view that you had that temporary view then you get your original field visibility back yeah yeah that's been my biggest pain this week has been moving fields around in air table. <laughs> Camille, what is new with you? Are you at your third or fourth job today? Number one. <laughs> I don't know anymore, guys. Well, I think that's do you have any any new things, Kuvan? Any news for this week? Or any um, formulas to show off? So I, I've got so much stuff that I'm working on. Um, it's not ready to be published yet. Um, but there's a couple more scripts that I'm trying to polish off to get ready to put in my script store. Um, one of them is for auto, an automation for automatically reverse sort of the fields in a roll up in a linked record field. Um, be, like, could you do chronologically? 
you know, reverse chronological support. So like the idea is you've got your project and you've got all of your, your updates or your contacts or your interactions, and you wanna roll them up in a reverse chronological order so that you can see the history of what happened with that, starting with what was most recent. So I've got an automation script where it will do that. It, it, it watches that the field that's whatever the date time field and whenever that changes, it will go through and sort that linked parent record. Okay. Um, so it'll do that. I find that super useful. Um, I've got my same table backlink scripts. Wait, that... we, we can't go off that last one because I have a question on it. Okay. Um, so on that one, I have a client they they have like this activity planner basically mm -hmm. like activity planning base so they assign people to different activities and then i have a roll-up field that pulls together like uh, a sentence for each one and gives them like an itinerary mm -hmm. but if they don't link them in the right order uh chronologically based on the dates of the activities mm -hmm. that they're all jumbled yeah so Pain, they do travel as well and so if the legs of travel are not picked chronologically then they have to resort them would mm -hmm. that script solve for that or is it only like based on the order that you link them no what it does is it says it doesn't matter what order you linked it in i want the order that they're linked in to match the chronological sort or the reverse chronological sort So, so like the idea is if, if you add a new one and it's in the middle chronologically, then the automation will say, okay, let's put it in the middle of the linked records. So is it based on the creation date of the linked record or can it be based on like a date field? It's based on a date field. Like, like an, a date field you could change potentially? Yeah, like an editable date field. That's awesome. I'm excited for that script because they will definitely be using that. That was their like biggest pain this year. They're like, if anything changes next year, it's that we don't have to sort <laughs> hundreds of people's itinerary linked records. Yeah. yeah. Okay, my kitchen's beeping. I gotta go check again. And then there were two. Uh, we're still here, kind of yeah. technically. Um, let's see, what else could I bring up that's new? I don't really know that we have much news other than the scripting app being free, which we kind of broke earlier, I think, yeah. last week as well. Yeah, I don't know of anything. Changed. Yeah. Well, I guess that is the wrap on the tutorial for multi line formulas. I was trying to think of other things that there are this week, but that, that was basically it that we had. And that's, oh, you have other, you have other projects that you're working on that you almost went into. I always have projects that I'm working on. I always have projects, but I can't share any of them because I'll have like NDAs with clients on their data. Yeah. Well, a lot of this is stuff like I'm trying to do things for clients and I'm like, there's got to be a better way of doing this. Let me write a script. Let me write a formula. But it's something, usually what it is, is it's like, you know, the second or third or the fourth or the fifth client where I'm like, okay, I keep doing this. <laughs> yeah. Let me find a generic solution. Yeah. Do you like re just reuse a lot of scripts across clients for those kind of use cases? Um, as far as scripts that I actually deliver to clients, I find I'm actually shocked at how little I reuse scripts. Um, there's just usually enough that needs tweaking for their particular base. Um, you know, like I, I've got a script that does a cascade delete and that script has to be tweaked for every single client. I was thinking, how complicated could cascade delete or cascade duplicate be? Well, actually, it, it, it can be enough different where it's never the exact same script for any client. Yeah. I've been 
so I have only ever used one script in Airtable and it's your delete one. So it deletes a record, just they don't have the automation to delete uh -huh. like Integromat does, which I don't know how they don't yet, but that's the only one. And I've been trying to think, so I, I understand the use of scripting and like reordering the linked record fields. And I could understand the cascade delete, although with the, I could think of how to do it with the one that I have. I don't know how useful, how well it would work. But with no, with like Airtable's automations and doing, are we using a few automations? But scripting would obviously just be one. I've been trying to find other solutions where scripting would be used and I can't find any. <laughs> Cause like everything, I make everything work with like out scripting, just with like proper database design. Maybe I'm not having as complex of projects, which it sounds like maybe not, or I just tell people I can't do that. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times, I'll be honest, if I can find a way of doing something without scripting that, well, if I can find a way of doing something that doesn't involve scripting and does not involve automations, 99% of the time, I'm going to opt for that solution. If I can do it just formula field or role fields, I will do that. Um, but there's sometimes where like running totals script things like where you're trying to make comparisons and create matches of I've got stuff in table one and I want to see what matches in table two. And you don't, you don't have that relationship set up yet. You're trying to create that relationship. I find it so much easier using a script to try and do that because a lot of times the logic isn't just, Oh, my, my field value here matches exactly my field value here. It's usually something different. It's something a little bit more complicated, like, well, the value here could be any of these choices here kind of thing. Yeah. 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 So. For that, there's been a few times like that where I've uh, thought like scripting might be a good option there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, uh, like you said, like what they, the record they picked from needs to be like one of the fields there needs to be an option in that other record. Yeah. So I just write kind of like data validation formulas that return like a lot of like red exclamation points or green check or like nothing or like okay. to, to say like yeah. you entered a rec entered something that works. Yeah. Or, or sometimes the other times when I will choose for a scripting option is when it could be done with an automation, but it doesn't need to be done with an automation. And you can't get more automation runs. So sometimes I'll have something that'll be a script that could have been done with an automation, but I'll do it with a script because the users, they're initiating it anyway. And that's one less automation run that you have to worry about that, yeah. you know, could it accidentally be triggered by something else? The nice thing is with the script is a lot of times the scripts that I have that do big changes there are scripts where the very first thing says, hi, I'm a script, this is what I do. Are you sure you want to continue? So yeah. even if they accidentally click it, we don't run off and do a whole bunch of changes all at once. Yeah. I just thought of a way to get around the 50,000 automations is if you had, if you were doing billing monthly and you like had to get more and say support wasn't emailing you back, couldn't you just like get a new workspace, put it on the pro plan and then it would, start that one over you just have to pay for another another license well the problem is not only are you paying for another license and all of that is all of your collaborators so yeah a lot of people if they're not just one person organizations they've got other people and you just can't do that to them yeah i've never done that but i was like that would get you at least up and running again if you just transferred the base there so Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. To, to me, if you're getting anywhere close to the end of your automations that you actually have available per month, then you need to seriously think about how you can redesign what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, never... If you're anywhere close to like 90% of your automation runs, anywhere close to 90% of your record limits, start planning ahead. Yeah. I think it's an. I've never even came close, but I'm a, I'm not a huge business. None of my clients have came close either. 
I think with the right structure, it doesn't happen. I've seen some very bad structure. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, what I find really gets the, um, the automations run is things that where you want things done in the user interface and you've got a lot of people who are doing things. Um, and it's simply the volume of people who are doing it where it's like, okay, click this checkbox to do this. Um, that ends up, or, you, or when you have automations that are run where they wanna pull updated information, say every hour, that that tends to eat up a lot of things. Like if you add like, a call to an API to update like currency conversion prices. That's yeah, like if, if you wanted to do that, I, I mean, every hour is not that bad, but if you want to do it, you know, every five minutes and you have other bases in the same workspace that want to do automation runs, because the automation runs is across your entire base, excuse me, entire workspace, not just your base. Yeah. Okay. I think I have to go now. Um, I'll end it here. We'll see if we go. Awesome. Thank you, Kuban. It was great learning multi-line formulas. Thank you, Camille, for joining. But we'll cut it off here and we'll see you all next week. Thank you. <laughs>